The following is a Shaw TV sports presentation. Once again, a live look at Bedford Road Collegiate, the 50th edition of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. One game to go in this one. It is, of course, the championship final. Garden City Gophers out of Winnipeg, taking on the Hansworth Royals from Vancouver, British Columbia. A couple of teams with a lot of experience. Right now, we're going to send things over to our public address announcer, Jordy Hughes. And forward a 6-1, grade 12, number 10, Josh. Butler, and starting at forward, a 6'5", great 12, number 11, Ben Grant. The head coach of the Hansworth Royals is Mr. Cameron Mowat. The officials for this Brit Championship final are Mr. Brad Smith and Mr. Mitch Strum. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 50th time, let's play Brit Championship Basketball. Hansworth Royals out of Vancouver, British Columbia, wearing the white uniforms with the blue trim. They will be heading a screen right. It is the Garden City Gophers out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, with the black uniforms and the gold trim heading screen left, just about ready to tip things off. It'll be Josh Butler from Hansworth. He controls the opening tip. It's Ben Grant who comes away with it. Blake McLean wearing number three will bring it in to the front court for the Hansworth Royals. This is Nate Waters. Now on the outside, Grant puts up the long shot early three. Yeah, let's get used to that. Hansworth will have some guys inside the line outside, more of a traditional balance set, off the ball screen action, but they do jack, jack up a lot of threes. Garden City is just gonna play all their guys outside and let it fly. Well, we talked about we might see some outside shooting, two shots, two three-pointers. We're knotted up at three early going in this one. Waters looking inside for Grant. Grant will look to attack, puts it off the glass. That one won't go. Gets the rebound on his own miss, but then loses the handle. Garden City comes away with it. This is Justin Omega with the ball. Now Kalen Reyes, he hit that initial three-pointer. This is Chris Kachalian. Now a little man, Troy Pender, an interesting player. Grade 10 player, son of the coach. He shoots at will. He's going to take you a step to his left and put up the long shot. Long on that attempt. Good job by Omega to get in there and grab the loose ball. Leads to another long attempt. This one, Kevin Kamara off the mark. Some decent looks here for Garden City, but no points on that trip down the floor. Jumper there. That one won't go for Grant. Out of bounds. Will stay with the Royals. Yeah, so far both teams have gotten the looks that they want offensively. In Garden City, they're over half court, they're getting the look they want. <laughs> uh, Hansworth, though, they've gotten two nice looks inside as well as a three-pointer. Long look here for Nate Waters, just gets the front of the rim for the Royals. So remains knotted up at three early going in this championship final. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley with you from Bedford Road Collegiate in Saskatoon. This is Kamara. He just decides to put up that shot. That one, no good. Battle for the loose ball. It's the Royals coming away with it. You know, if I, and if I'm Hansworth and I watch that semifinal game Garden City played, talk about Penner at the end of that, went down, tweaked an angle, right. was hobbling around a little. I'd be, anytime he touches the ball, I'd pressure him hard, see if he's got lateral movement or if he's still feeling the effects of that ankle that was only a couple hours ago. That's right. Butler, the running take, won't go. And when you talk about this Garden City team, Scott, we alluded to it in the first game. This is a team with zero depth. These five guys that you're seeing are going to be the guys that play the vast majority of minutes in this game. Only three guys on the bench, and uh, they don't really like to go to that bench too much to this Garden City team. 
Yeah, and, and you know what? If that's the way you play, then they're probably conditioned to do that. Yep. I would imagine it's not an issue unless, unless you get foul injury. trouble or you get yep. an injury, and then, then it becomes a huge deal. Butler 0 for 2 on the free throw line. However, good job by Ben Grant to come down with the offensive rebound. Leads to the long take for McLean. That one no good. Kamara there on the rebound. Tries to dribble his way through traffic. Butler didn't be called for the foul. <laughs> Pair of quick three-pointers to start this one. No basket since. Two minutes, 16 seconds into this championship final. Nice ball movement down low. Shot won't drop for Gachalian. Second chance, not good either. So well, Garden City might have to, they, they do need to penetrate the paint a little bit. Like, take it in and, and at least challenge them inside. Make their players in that zone. At least know you're coming in. Uh, you can always kick back out, but just the, the just around the perimeter is tough. You got to penetrate that paint. Kamara underneath, good defense there. Butler kind of shutting him down. Wild shot won't drop. It's McLean Offensive on foul. the run. Offensive foul. Nice job standing in there. Yeah. He was coming pretty hard and, and just stood his ground and uh, took a really nice charge. You can see Penner's got a limp. He's hobbling a little bit. I'd be right up on him. Kamara, now Omega. Penner's going to put up the shot from well outside. That one no good. Chew there for the rebound. Stanley Chu on the Hansworth Royals. McLean ahead for Butler. That's a terrible entry pass. Grant able to keep it alive. Loose ball scooped up by McLean. Waters working his way in. Butler able to keep it alive. Now he has to try and find the hoop. Can't get it to go. You're right, doesn't look like Penner moving as swiftly as he could be following that injury in the semifinal. Reyes long shot, no good. Will go out of bounds off of the support of the backboard. And that's kind of what I mean. Like if you've got a player who can't move and is limited, you want to get right up on him, even if traditionally he's quick and can handle the ball. Make him prove it to you. McLean picks up the dribble. Open look for Waters. Waters well off the mark. Another chance for Hansworth. Little jumper. Finally, we have our third field goal of the game. Ben Grant hits. He's got all five points for Hansworth. Mara, now Omega, loses the handle. McLean dribbles out with it. He'll look to run the floor, takes it all the way in. Good defense by Reyes, and good job swooping in there. Nate Waters to grab the loose ball, keep the possession alive. Is that a technical foul? It is indeed. Technical, it looks like they got McLean for it. Pardon me, it was the Hansworth bench called for it. So that will send Penner to the free throw line. Good on the first free throw attempt. So it will be the shot and possession. The bench being just a little bit too vocal over there on the Hansworth side of things. Impossible for us to tell what's being said with this Loud yeah. gym and they're across the building from us. I think a lot of it is just the, the uh, aggressive rebounding underneath, a lot of the underneath play, um, packs in the arms and they're going up to shoot. Saskatoon basketball tends to be, uh, when you're going inside, they let a lot, you gotta be tough inside to score, uh, which isn't the way it's always called in other places in the country. Nice little jumper here. That'll drop for Garden City's Jacob McCallalad. That'll give them the one point lead. Like could have been a travel there. Here he goes a jump ball and ball. Will head back over to Garden City. It looked like initially he had a lane down, uh, down the right side there, but it was just excellent help defense by Garden City, just closing that off right away. 
Mikowalab with the ball. He's the one guy that will come into the game on occasion for Garden City. Often he and Gachalian will switch off. All the other starters pretty much will play the entire way. Mikowalab a little jumper. That one no good. Kamara comes down with the offensive board. You know, one of the things you saw that uh, both 18 foot pull up jump shot, that's the one thing that Garden City does that puzzles me a little bit. Most teams that play this style, it's either layups or threes. And they really don't want that 16, 18 foot pull up jumper. It's a low percentage shot, but Garden City takes a lot of them. They'll, they'll do that one dribble hard pull up from the three point line. Most teams that play this uh, penetrate and pitch, four out, one in style, they don't like the mid range jump shot. Officials get together, will remain Garden City ball. I believe the discussion might have been whether that shot hit the rim and if the shot clock should have reset, as it did. It is a fresh clock for Garden City. Penner, open look from the corner, hits for three, his first basket of the night. Well, that's the one they want. I mean, the corner three, again, teams playing this style, the corner three is the highest percentage shot you, you can take from the perimeter. Four point advantage for Winnipeg. Claim looking to push his way in. Good defense. Looks like maybe Kamara got a hand on that one. Penner another really quick three. That one well off the mark. Looks like McLean initially was going to let that one go out of bounds. Steady plays it. Pass doesn't find its intended target. So back comes Winnipeg with the four point lead. Slow scoring start to this championship final. Another miss here. Kalalad a little bit short. Again, it was one of those long pull-up twos. Minute and a half remaining first quarter. Good defense, Reyes up to deny that pass. Hansworth keeps it alive. Running shot, that'll drop for McLean. First points of the night for the co-captain of the Hansworth Royals. He and Ben Grant, the two captains. A little too aggressive there. But it's interesting, we've seen Penner slow start, he hit the corner three, uh, but nothing else. I mean, sometimes when you have a bad ankle, as, a, as somebody used to shoot the ball a little bit, uh, your base is, is everything when you're a shooter. And, uh, you know, if his ankle is bothering him a little bit, it could be, uh, it could make a big difference in terms of his accuracy tonight. With those two fouls, Josh Butler checking out of the game for Hansworth, replaced by Merrick Van Blyant. Penner going to put up a little jumper. That one no good. This is Van Blyant wearing number 12, his first shift of the night. 45 seconds to go, first quarter championship final. Nice defense. Kamara up to block that shot. Loose ball on the floor. Kamara comes away with it. Penner on the run. McCallalad, now it's Reyes for three. Long on that attempt. That was tough. That was a contested shot. The penetration didn't really pull the defender off at all, and he took a, a long contested three. That's not the one. You keep moving it. You have lots of time in the shot clock. Jake Horn into the game for Hansworth. Wearing number four, his first shift. Shot clock, game clock, pretty much identical as time winds down. First quarter of play, low scoring first quarter of play in this championship game. That's so. the thing sometimes with the three point teams, right? It's feast or famine. Sure. Right now we're pretty hungry over here. <laughs> now under 10 to go. McLean looks to push his way in. Kamara again looking to deny the shot. This time he's going to get called for the foul. And McLean's taken it in there a couple times. The penalty leaned on him a little bit. He hasn't got the calls yet. If he keeps staying aggressive, They'll keep going to the line, I think. They, they just, uh, they have fouled him a couple times that haven't been called. I think if he's consistent, keeps going to the line, the officials are going to reward him with trips to the free throw line. Clean good on the first one. That gives him three points in the early going here. He and Ben Grant, the two co captains I've mentioned, the only guys who have scored here for Hansworth. Second one will rattle home as well. That'll allow for a late substitution for the Hansworth Royals. Down to three seconds to go. It's going to be Kamara heaving the last second shot. Had a good line on it on a long contested three. I thought that was going in, but just a little too long. From here, it looked like it was true. So 
as we say, a low scoring first quarter, Scott. Uh, these teams are getting their looks, but like you say, uh, neither team really uh, any sort of hot hand here in the early going. No, I mean, both teams um, really, and they've had a combination of open looks and contested looks, but the thing is, in terms of sheer volume, eventually the law of averages with a good shooting team, they'll still fall, they will start falling. Uh, the one thing you might want to consider, we talked a little bit, kind of uh, downplayed maybe uh, the, the legs factor, but sure. the one time uh, legs will come into play a little bit might be with three-point shooting, right? So, um, especially maybe nerves in a final game as well. Uh, I'd expect, though, that these teams will settle in uh, and, and they'll they'll start to make shots. Like I said, they won't stop shooting them. And just over uh, the course of the game, the sheer volume, I suspect, uh, they'll go on a hot hand and it'll balance out. Just about ready to kick off the second quarter play in the 50th edition of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Hansworth Royals out of Vancouver taking on Garden City out of Winnipeg. I mentioned it earlier, Hansworth, one of three teams in the history of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. One of two teams to have a three-peat at Brit. One of three years in a row, 05 through 07. For those teams, well, it was the year, those were the years that seemed like really uh, dominated by the lower mainland of British Columbia. We had Vancouver College, of course, that was so good for so many years as well as Hansworth. Came in and really kind of owned this tournament for the early part of the 2000s. Well, yeah, Hansworth, I mean, they had uh, they had some players who went down to the NCAA. Yeah. Right, they had uh, a couple of really, really good players. And I mean, Garden City, both these teams, whenever they show up at Brit, I mean, they're bringing it. They're bringing strong teams every time they come here. Callalad, now Reyes. Reyes will put up the long shot, comes up short on that one. Good rebound by Omega. Now we'll get a whistle underneath. That was a really good look, wide open look. Yes, yeah. he just a little, little short, a little wide. But I mean, percentage wise, just keep shooting those. It'll be Omega to shoot now. He'll head to the free throw line. First, we'll get a visit over to the scorer's table for official Brad Smith. get together and have a brief discussion before we get free throws from Omega. I think the issue might be that uh, Hansworth has a player out there wearing number two and uh, it's possible he's not listed on the score sheet because he's not in my program and I don't believe he was on the score sheet so maybe they're just trying to get that straightened out figure out exactly who that is. Anybody can figure this mess out. It's Brad Smith. Brad Smith on it. On top of it. So, yeah, I, I apologize. I will not know the name of number two for Hansworth. I think I heard Jacob something, but. That's what he is. <laughs> Jacob something. Jacob something. <laughs> Continues to be a real scoring drought in this game. Omega misses the front end of two free throws. Two teams combined for just 18 points through eight and a half minutes of play. That free throw also bricks. well off the, the mark. Yeah, aren't even close. landing with a thud. McLean picks up the dribble. Mysterious number two now. That shot not close for Van Bliant. Reyes will come out with the ball. Penner. Henner wanted to put up that long shot. He's blocked by number two. Running take, McLean. Good job to get that one to drop. Yeah, tough like look. I said, McLean heading to the rim, I think, is a, is a winning formula for Hansworth. He's up to six points here in the early going, which is better than half his team's total. A little jumper here for Kamara. Well, just nothing dropping for Garden City. Garden City might want to see if those three guys on the bench have got anything <laughs> going on. Running take for Mysterious Man number two. That'll go. So all of a sudden, 
Now a four point lead typically isn't a big lead in a basketball game. And when you've only scored nine points, it feels like a bit of a mountain and a lot of your shots are looking like that. And Garden City right now, like really stagnant offense. Like they're standing around. Uh, uh, Hansworth is doing a really good job at denying the passes to the wing and ha uh, Garden City doesn't have any off ball screen movement, nothing. They're just sort of trying to sort of shimmy back and forth and get open on their own. Uh, you need to run some off ball screens, weak side screens. Get your guys open because they're certainly not doing it by yourself. This really stagnant offense from Garden City so far. McLean attacks once again. He's going to draw the foul down low. We'll get a foul called against Kevin Kamara, his second in the game. And now Garden City uh, probably going to talk about some of those issues you mentioned, Scott. Yeah, and, and you know one of the drawbacks of some of these uh, spread motion off spread offenses is they they call the motion offense, but sometimes they rely too much on the individual to drive and beat his man. And if that's not working out so well, then, then you've really got nothing unless you get some other action involved. And, and one of the things that I haven't seen yet is weak side screens, trying to get some of these guys open on a down screen pop up, hit the ball across, uh, crossing the floor, uh, ball from one side of the floor to the other, get the defense moving side to side. And, and really, Garden City needs to do something. Maybe it's their, maybe just their legs. Maybe because they play six guys, and then that's all the more reason to use each other to help get the ball moving across the floor, get your guys open because they're not able to do it one on one, beating the man right now. Yeah, Garden City still looking for their first points of the second quarter after the first quarter. They only saw them score nine. They just really look flat right yeah. now. Like they're not a lot of energy, not a lot of. Uh, of really in intensity. Um, they look like they're kind of spent. You look like the body language right now, they just, not a lot of, not a lot of pep in the step. Yeah, it's, it's and you know, certainly we've talked about the fatigue of playing, playing a long tournament, playing several close games as Garden City has, but you'd hope in a, a championship game, you dig into whatever reserves you have and bring some energy because you're right it doesn't, just doesn't seem like it's there right now yeah I mean like I mentioned like most of these players at this level uh, they play club or they play um, they play all the time like they mean conditioning shouldn't be an issue especially if you only play six if that's the way you play uh, these guys should be good to go uh, but sometimes you know there's there's mental fatigue too sometimes in these kind of tournaments big there shot there for Kamara he hits for three his first points of the night and all that being said, they're only down two. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Hansworth <laughs> was running away with this thing. Too many steps for Hansworth's Jake Horn. Five and a half to go, first half of this championship final. Sorry, Scott. With a three-point shooting team, I mean, you know, two minutes from now, we could be uh, in a totally different place. Yeah. You know, Garden City could knock down four in a row, bang, 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 and, and all of a sudden it could be uh, a whole other story. They have so many guys who can shoot them. Little jumper here inside the arc. That one off the mark from McAllalad. Second chance for Garden City. However, they lose the handle, get it back. Good hustle by McAllalad to chase down that loose ball. And too many steps for Omega. And we see again, it's those, those long pull-ups. I'm not a fan of, of those. They, they take basically one step inside yep. the three-point line to shoot a uh, pull-up jump shot. And those are just the percentage of those going in. If you don't have that, kick it back out. You know, if you can't get all the way to the rim, it's then these offenses really are based on either drive to the rim or kick it back out to the next shooter who has a better shot. You're going to take an 18-footer, take a 20-footer for three. Sure. This is Nate Waters with the lay-in. He's just fresh back into the game for a Hansworth, his first points of the night. Back up to a four-point Hansworth Royals lead. Mega pull up for the jumper, a little long on that attempt. Chu comes away with it for the Royals. He's going to put up the running shot. Tough foul call here. He'll go against Omega. Gachalian back in for the Garden City Gophers. Nelson McCallalad to the bench. First foul of the game on Omega. Chu long on the first free throw attempt. He's still looking for his first points of the night. Does hit the back end. That'll allow the substitution for Hansworth. Merrick Van Blyant back in. The bench goes Ben Grant. Under 
four and a half to go in the first half of this championship final. Five point lead for Vancouver. Kachalian, now long shot. That one off the mark for Kamara. McLean once again looking to attack. Tries to dish that one intended for Van Blyant. We'll go back over to Garden City. And Hansworth, uh, you know, with Garden City shooting so poorly, they've had a chance to really sort of take control of this game, and, and they really haven't been able to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, turnovers and, and sophisticated shots of their own. They may look back on this this stretch and regret it if, if Garden City ever gets those threes to start falling. Plain knocks it out of bounds. Will remain with Garden City halfway home in the second quarter of play. Reyes gets it in. Penner up top. Again, a long two, hits it. Three forty-five now to go. Good read there by Reyes. He looks down the floor for Omega. Omega will just track it down, get it into the hands of Penner. Penner a quick three, that one off the mark. That was a great closeout by the Hansworth player. I mean, transition threes are often, they're hard to defend. And uh, Hansworth did their homework. They got right in the face of the shooter, and Penner did not have a clean look on that at all. Waters gets up into the air and draws the contact. It'll be Omaga picking up his second. Another substitution for Hansworth. Grant back in. That'll send Van Bliant to the bench. A pair of shots here for Nate Waters. Long on the first one. So remains a three-point Vancouver lead. Second one will drop. Penner into the front court. This is Reyes. Right out there on Penner. Nice pass for Kamara. He looks to take it in. Can't get it to go off the glass. Second chance, Will. Yeah, they executed that little pick and roll very nicely. Penner's probably going to complain he lost the assist on that. <laughs> Had an offensive rebound stat instead. Back within two are the Gophers. This is McLean looking inside for Chu. That'll go out of bounds. Stay with Hansworth. Nine seconds to work with on the shot clock. Open look from the corner, hits it. Yeah, that was a great little back screen in the corner. They set up for that corner three. Got a really nice open look. That was a well-designed play. Two and a half to go. First half of action in the championship final. Back up to a five-point lead for Hansworth. They've led much of the way. Penner, little jumper again, just inside the arc. Comes up short. Chu dribbles out with it. McLean thought about the shot. Instead, putting up the long shot for Hansworth. Grant, that one won't go. Hansworth can't corral the loose ball, so Chalian in the other direction. Looks like that was intended for Reyes. Good job there by Hansworth's mystery man to keep it alive. McLean. Trying to go one-on-one, -on -one. we'll get a foul called against Kachalian. A lot of shake and bake there. Fourth team foul for Garden City. Next one will put Vancouver into the bonus. We've got a minute 45 to go now. Looks like we had a moving screen there. Yeah, that's right. There's a fine line between setting a solid aggressive screen and, and moving it. It's so tempting sometimes if you know, you know the, the player coming off that screen was a little wide, the defender's going a little wide, and as a screener you know you're supposed to get your guy just sending out that little hip check, that little shoulder lean. So easy to do, it's hard to stay disciplined sometimes. Reyes, nice pass inside for Omega. He has to dribble back through. Omega now in the corner. He gets it back up high. This is Penner. Penner looking to penetrate, kicks it out instead for Reyes. Reyes long on the three-point attempt. McLean there to grab the rebound. He 
Takes it ahead into the hands of Waters. Crane with Kachalian out on him. Bounces it in now for Grant. Grant back outside. It's going to lead to a long take from McLean. That one off the mark to the left-hand side as time winds down on the shot clock. Under a minute now to go. Second quarter of action. Long shot that one. No good. It was one of the few open threes that yeah. Garden City has had. That was a really nice, nice look in transition there. Garden City is really going to need those ones to go. Hansworth is doing a pretty good job of contesting most of the threes. Waters off the mark. Time getting short here in the first half of action. Just over 30 seconds to go. Penner, a quick three-pointer. That one no good. Now down to 22 seconds to go first half. So it looks like we will have Hansworth taking the lead into the locker room. Question of how big it'll be. So they're going to look to work the clock. About three or four seconds difference between shot and game clock. McLean gets the friendly roll. Now Garden City can take the last shot of the first half, trying to get it ahead. Knocked out of bounds. Garden City 2.3 seconds to set something up. Will be Garden City taking a timeout. Chance to talk things over, set something up. Final 2.3 seconds to go. It'll be interesting to see if they, they have some, uh, some off-ball screen action happening or if they just throw it in and try to let somebody create. That's sort of been their MO so far. In the semifinal, uh, most of the time they did spread the floor and just let their guys go, but they also did have um, some, some screen action off the ball to try to free up their shooters. And I think that's what they're going to need to go with here in the second half and even in this, this, last, uh, this last play. Either, either a ball screen, to get the penetration and then a pitch out, uh, or an off the ball screen to free up their shooters. I, I don't think they can they can rely on just their guys uh, beating their man one on one. They've, that has been their MO so far and it's resulted in a lot of contested threes and, and 16 points on the board. Yeah, very low scoring on both sides. Seven points does mark the largest lead of the night for Hansworth. I think at the start of the game, if you told the Hansworth guys, hey, you're almost going to score 23 points in the first half, you wouldn't feel too good about that. But now they've done that, and they've got a, a seven-point lead right now. We'll see if Garden City is able to dial something up here in the final 2.3 seconds before these teams will head to the locker room. It'll be Reyes to inbound. It'll be a long inbound pass for Penner. A couple of steps to his left. That one well contested by Chu. Yeah, it was really well contested. They ran a little, little decoy action, a little flare screen uh, to try to free Penner up from the three-point shot, and there was nothing there. Totally contested. Absolutely brilliant defense on that play by Hansworth. It is the 50th anniversary of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament, certainly one of the long-term sporting institutions here in the city of Saskatoon. We here at Shaw TV have been very proud to be a part of the Brit tradition for the last 15, 16 years or so. So we put together a little bit of a highlight pack looking back at the last several years of Brit. Enjoy.
winds down in this championship final. Holy Cross brings it over. Five seconds to go. That is the game for the second straight year. The hands was secondary Royals out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. It is time for the big game. Tons of games, tons of teams, 40 years of history. All culminates with this championship game. Has to take a shot. He does. That one misses. Rebounded by Vancouver College. We'll have a foul call. Clock expires. And it looks like they're just going to call the game. Vancouver College is the winner of the 2008 Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. The defending champion Vancouver College Fighting Irish taking on Paul Kane High School out of St. Albert, Alberta. Vancouver College for the second straight year has traveled across Western Canada to come to Saskatoon and claim the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament Championship. Is there a sign up there that said Bang Goes the Dynamite? Forsyth will put up the three-pointer. That one no good. Time winds out. Pitt Meadows has ended the reign of Vancouver College. Triple reign comes to an end. There will be no three-peat. Congratulations to Pitt Meadows. 13 seconds until St. George's out of Vancouver will claim the championship. It's the 43rd edition of Brit. The crowd begins to rise up. Well, the shot clock, I guess he's going to let it go. <laughs> And congratulations to the St. George Saints out of Vancouver, British Columbia. Bogway grabs the miss here, and now just the final five seconds will tick away. Scott's College has come to Saskatoon, and for the first time ever, the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament banner will hang south of the equator. Set it a quick shot. Sir Winston Churchill celebrating. The officials are going to get together and talk it over. No, they're saying the game's no, over. over. Looks like our final score will go at 76 53, unless Iworski hits this shot, which won't drop. But the Lavoldis Golden Suns out of retirement get have played the 46th edition of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. For Miller, he'll fall back, put up the jumper. That one, no good. Martin Leboldis can just dribble out the final nine seconds of this one. That will essentially do it. Ruta Welch puts up the desperation heave from three quarters court. Almost goes, but it is the Archbishop O'Leary Spartans out of Edmonton who are your 2016 Bedford Road Invitational Tournament champions. Look at it, made no mistake. Still a 16-point deficit and more good ball movement by SFX, ending up in the hands of James, who gets the easy. Congratulations to the St. Francis Xavier Rams out of Edmonton, Alberta. 2017 Bedford Road Invitational Tournament Champions. Punch TV, it's the nerdiest show on the airwaves, featuring artists, geeks, and special guests who love comics, toys, and pop culture. Watch Punch TV, only on Shaw TV.
You know, Harrison and I really enjoy cooking in the kitchen. And we want you to join us. Hi, I'm Wilna from iHeart Studio. Join me for an adventure into the creative side of life. With each project, we celebrate the beauty of life with art. I'll help you find your inner creative self on iHeart Studio. Where there are no bars, there's freedom. It's where we find the strongest connections. And power, we never knew we had. It's not always easy. And sometimes, you wonder what you got yourself into. But when the stars are your compass, you tend to find your way. Ever watch TV and said to yourself, I could do that? Well, you can. As part of its community access programming, Shaw TV is looking for volunteer-run, community-produced short segments and shows. Create your own program, your ideas, your vision, on television. Bring us your proposal, sell us on it, and we'll train you and your crew, providing the professional equipment you need to make your ideas reality for free. Everyone is welcome. Get involved in making your own community program. See where it takes you. Back at the half, 23-16 is our score in the 50th annual Bedford Road Invitational Basketball Tournament. Getting ready to take a look at some highlights from the first half of play. And well, it was such a low scoring first half, we could pretty much just show you every basket that was scored as these teams combined to score 39 points in 16 minutes of play. We will take a look at some of the highlights. Some shooting troubles for Garden City in the first half. Nice touch there, however, from Mikhail Alad. Nice touch from the corner, I believe that was Reyes hitting that shot. Great first half for Blake McLean. He leads all scorers with eight points in the first 16 minutes of play. Some good defense there by Garden City and uh, certainly can't question anyone's intensity. Another good take by McLean. And attacking. We've, we've uncovered the identity of the mysterious number two as well. We'll tell you about that as we get underway in the second half of action in this championship final between Hansworth and Garden City. Nice take there. Nate Waters with the finish for Hansworth and then Omega, a nice touch. But again, one of those shots that was from just inside the three-point line. Good first half for Kevin Kamara. He ended up the first half with five points for the Garden City Gophers. Troy Penner also with five both to lead the Garden City Gophers in a very low scoring first half. Half that saw them only put 16 points on the board. Going to need to get something going in the second half of things, Scott. Yeah, as we talked about uh, right before the break there, right before the, the half ended, Garden City's gonna need to use some creativity offensively, I think, to get their shots going to free up some of their shooters. Hansworth has done such a really good job of contesting those three point shooters and getting right up into them. Garden City's gonna need to create some open space. Underway in the second half of action in the 50th edition of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Penner takes it underneath. Reyes there to grab it, gets it in. Nice touch, good movement there. Yeah, that's something that was lacking a little from Garden City as well, that penetration, trying to get into the paint, get to the rim. McLean on the other end looking to attack. He gets the friendly roll. Yeah, that's, that's where McLean was so effective in the yep. first half as well, just bullying his way into the lane. He's strong. Um, he can, he can sort of get to the rim with the guy on his shoulder. Nice drive there. It's funny, we started this game off with a couple of very quick three-pointers. Thought we might be in for an offensive show, and clearly that hasn't been the case. And a couple of very quick baskets out of the locker room here, and now we'll have a foul against Garden City. Yeah, the second half holds true to the first. <laughs> we're, we're done scoring for a while. <laughs> Third foul of the game on Justin Omega. All those fouls have been picked up in just the last couple of minutes of play in this championship final. Waters controls. This is Ben Grant, Omega out on him. Pardon me, Kamara out on him. McLean faking the long shot, the ball gets knocked away. Time winding down on the shot clock, gonna be a heave for McLean, ends up in the lap of Omega. He'll push it down the floor. 
Ends up in the hands of Penner. Thought about the shot. Now this is Reyes. Chris Kachalian back to Reyes. Now Reyes trying to muscle his way in against Butler. Can't get the roll. So McLean pushes for Chu. Chu takes off from well outside. Can't get it to go. Keeping it alive with the Royals. However, into the hands of Garden City's Penner. Reyes pushes it ahead. Gachalian's going to put up a long shot. He hits for three first points of the night. Yeah, those are great looks in transition. You push the ball. You got the defense trying to sprint back to stop the layups. Shooters flare to the, the three-point line. You get that nice open look. Good defense there by Gachalian to knock the ball away. Running take. Won't drop for Grant. Second chance for Grant. That one will go. That little bully ball there for Grant. Yeah. Just using that, that size, that big strong frame to get the bucket. Now this is Reyes. Reyes from way outside. He hits for three. All of a sudden, he's up to eight points on the night. Five of those coming in the first two and a half minutes here of this third quarter. Butler saves that air pass. McLean decides he's going to put spot up for the long shot. Garden City will just let that one go out of bounds. Yeah, McLean looked a little off balance there. His kind of feet weren't really set. He launched that one up. Probably better set to drive on that one. So now a three-pointer would tie it for Garden City. You know they're not shy about shooting those. Maga now Reyes up top. This is Penner. Penner works his way to the right. That shot off the mark. McLean works his way through. If Gachalian might have gotten a piece of that one, Garden City comes away. That was Mark. a good drive by McLean, though. That's typically that results in a, in a trip to the free throw line. Not that time, though. Nice take on the other end. Omega underneath gets it to go. Garden City having some good success when they do attack the rim. Uh, I think they need to focus on that penetration, get all the way to the rim, hit those threes, especially in transition, and, uh, and kind of put those uh, long pull-up jumpers on the shelf for a while. Right, Penner tried one in a couple of possessions ago, and you could see one of his teammates kind of snipping at him a little bit. So you wonder if they even talked about maybe not taking some of those long uh, two-point shots, because as soon as he took that pull-up jumper, immediately you could see his teammates were having a bit of a uh, conversation with him about it. So, uh, you know, you get to the rim, they're having great success in the drive so far in this third quarter. Just keep attacking, 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 and then the three-pointers are going to come off of that. One-point game in the Hansworth Royals timeout. While we have a brief moment, I want to wish a very happy birthday to our producer, Eric Steiner. Eric Steiner celebrating his birthday just a day or two ago. I understand there may be some, some treats in store for Eric in, a, in our makeshift control room. So I was told, make sure to wish Eric a very happy birthday. So happy to do that. And thank you for spending part of it producing some basketball. Been a long weekend of work for Eric and the whole Shaw TV crew, our outstanding volunteers as well. Spending a lot of their weekend here at Bedford Road Collegiate. Well, better than being outside. Absolutely. Game. Very good point. Butler running take, gets it to go. Chance at a three-point play. Butler been one of the real spark plugs for the Hansworth Royals throughout this tournament. That just his first basket of the night. He'll head to the free throw line. He's given the Royals back the three point lead. And a real nice response from Hansworth coming out of that yeah. little run from Garden City. Keep strong, keep attacking that hoop. So to the free throw line, looking to complete the three-point play. Josh Butler, unable to do so. Loose ball, though, won by Hansworth. McLean comes down with it, can't finish it. So now it's Omega on the run. He's got Penner with him. Omega going to try to just go up. Good defense here by Hansworth. Yeah, solid transition defense. Getting back, preventing the layup. No three-point shooters that time for Garden City on the, in the transition. 
Oh, nice can't pass. Give up that. My goodness. Kamara easy laying oh, underneath. Goodness. My 10 year old basketball team gave that up. I'd lose it. <laughs> <laughs> One point game once again, halfway home in the third quarter. That shot won't drop for Chu. Second chance for Hansworth. Ben Grant makes no mistake. He's up to nine points on the night. Penner into the hands of Kachalian. Kamara, now Penner. Scott woods out on him. Jumper, no good for Kamara. Yeah, it was a nice work, defensive rotation there by Hansworth. Little pick and roll. We saw that work in the first half for Garden City. At the end of the first half there, tried to run it again. Initially looked like he had a clear pass for the basket, but Hansworth did a really good job of coming over and closing that off. McLean works his way in back outside. Long shot, Ben Grant. That's a two-pointer. Back to the five-point lead for Hansworth. After Garden City had gotten within one. Three minutes to go, third quarter, the championship final. Penner for Kamara. Kamara looks to take it in, can't find the angle. Two on the run in the other direction for McLean. McLean looks to take it in, some contact there. Play on. Omega had it briefly for Garden City. He gets it knocked away, leads to the long take. That one off the mark for Waters. Yeah, it was a not, pretty kind of ill-advised shot for Waters there. Just got the ball back, it was contested. Penner tries to go off the glass. Good hustle by Reyes to keep it for Garden City. Penner's now got it in the corner, looks to push it in. Got in some trouble up in the air, tried to dish it. Ben Grant there to pick it off for the Royals. So back they come, up five. Chu in the corner. Jumper, that one's long for Grant. Mara, long shot for three, no good. Battle for the loose ball. Gachalian in there, mixing it up with McLean. Gachalian the last to touch it. That was a decent look there. Yeah. Kamara coming off, it was one of those down screens we were talking about. A little off screen, down screen, three him up for the three. He had a decent look at it. Keep taking those, eventually enough will go in. Substitutions both sides. Jacob McCallalad wearing number two for Garden City. And the aforementioned mystery man for the Hansworth Royals wearing number two. As we've got wedgie. the, they like to call the Brit Wedgie. Yes. <laughs> Ball gets lodged in the rim there. The mystery man, Jacob LaRose, had been wearing number 43 for the Royals, now wearing two. Officials sorting the situation out after that. Ball got wedged in the rim. Again, I guess the rules are sort of different everywhere. So it just yeah, becomes just Hansworth ball, ball yeah. out of bounds. Just a jump ball. Stays with Hansworth on the possession arrow with a shot clock at nine. So just like a help ball. Down to two now on the shot clock. Going to be LaRose heaving it from well outside, well off the mark. Understandable on a contested shot with time expiring. Still a five-point game, 121 to go. Third quarter. Winner of this one becomes the 50th champion in Bedford Road Invitational Tournament history. Hansworth already has three of those trophies. Looking to add a fourth, Garden City looking for their first ever championship. It's in, nice move, Ben Grant there to finish it. Yeah, Grant, solid finish with uh, with some contact on the arms there too. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Saskatoon doesn't get called a lot, that, that uh, <laughs> power sort of in the paint basketball. Uh, you gotta finish through contact here. And he did a really good job that time. Running shot, that one won't go from McAllowad. Back comes Hansworth, now up seven. A little bit slow to get back to the play as Kamara as he had hit the deck. Hansworth with numbers in the other direction. McLean hits the jumper. Yeah, tough uh, finish to the third quarter here yeah. for Garden City. Hansworth kind of came down some, some nice possessions and extended the lead here. One second difference between shot and game clock here. 
12 seconds to go, third quarter. Penner well outside, marked by LaRose. Now with five seconds to go in the third quarter, Penner trying to find it. It's going to be Kamara to heave it. Looks like he did get the shot off. It won't go, so now going to be a desperation heave well short for Josh Butler. So you said it, Scott. It really felt like in the early going of the third quarter, a bit of momentum for Garden City got their way back into this one. We're within one point and then just kind of slipped away a little bit on them there late. Yeah, if you're Garden City, you don't like the finish to the third quarter, but hey, you found you showed some signs of life offensively. You got some shots to go get going, uh, and, and you took it to the rim early on in the quarter. That start was really, really good for Garden City. Uh, and in the fourth quarter here, they really have to focus again on getting positive shots, getting the ball into the paint, kicking out for threes uh, in transition, running that three-point line, getting those open looks that Hansworth have done such a good job all night of closing off. And then we did see a little bit in that third quarter of some uh, weak side off the ball screens, generating some open looks from some shooters. So they are doing some things to try to get their shooters open. Uh, they're gonna need to go on a bit of a hot streak here yeah. uh, to beat Hansworth and, and McLean and, and uh, Grants and the other kids, they're they're getting in the paint and finishing down low. So, uh, you know, Garden City's going to have to be tough defensively, but they can trade three for two. I mean, there's eight minutes left, and if they do get hot uh, from that three-point line, they, they can actually give up some of these two-point baskets in the paint and still uh, fire some flamethrowers from deep and, and still be able to pull this thing out. So, Garden City's going to have to to come out, and really, I think they're going to have to win this on offense. Eight minutes to go in the 50th installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Garden City will begin the fourth quarter of play with the ball down by nine. After getting within one there in the third quarter, as we mentioned. Kalalat will pick up the dribble. Reyes thought about the shot. Butler's hand in his face, so Reyes will look to attack. He goes down to the floor. Hansworth will head in the other direction with the ball. Horn's got it. Now McLean once again inside for Butler. Back up, little jumper. That one drops for Ben Grant. Yeah, it's a tough uh, four points. Reyes had a clear path to the hoop, but he got a little out of control there. And a nice little jumper from the free throw line, extending that lead. Grant, a nice game. He's up to 15 points unofficially on the evening. Back to a double digit Hansworth lead. Calad. Now Penner well off the mark on that long shot. Yeah, that's a top shot. I mean, you got a guy right in your face, you don't create any separation. And then a long three-point heave. LaRose looking to attack. Shot might have been disrupted. Oh Big collision there. Not sure how you're not calling some of those. Yeah. Penner another long and quick shot. Yeah, you know, that one was a good one, though. That's in transition, uh, and that was a clean open look. And for a shooter like that, like, I really like that one. I think that that's a shot that if he gets it, he's got to take it every time. And a horn just takes a really long shot, hits nothing but net his first points of the night. All of a sudden, it's a 14 point Vancouver advantage. Yeah, a bit of a crisis moment here for Garden City. They've got to, uh, they've got to answer the bell here. That's not the one. I mean, it went in. That went in. But it's about the shot selection. No, I mean, a pull up with a hand right in his face. If you're Hansworth, you'll take that shot every single time. Does pull them back within 12. McLean, a nice little bit through. of hesitation. Big block by Kamara. Yeah, it was a nice step through. If he could have, uh, as Kamara came over, if he could have seen uh, Grant underneath, they had a wide open layup. Ball will stay with the Royals. 12 seconds on the shot clock. 6.06 to go. Fourth and final quarter of play. McLean, Horn, now into the corner. LaRose, back up. Nice take, Ben Grant. Yeah, this has become a Grant time here. Yeah. And he's, he's really been impressive in this fourth quarter and at the end of the third. 12 points for Grant here in the second half of action, 17 overall. Reyes thought about the shot, Grant picked him up though. Now it's Kamara far side, back up for Penner. He thought about the shot, down to three seconds now, and the shot clock loses the handle. Omega doesn't realize it's gonna go as a shot clock violation. And Garden City is really out of sorts right now. I mean, it's not really their, uh, their style to go that deep in the shot clock, yeah. not get one off. Uh, they're really flustered right now. Kachalian going to check back into the game. That'll send McCallalad 
to the bench for the Gophers. Again, only six players have seen the floor tonight for Winnipeg. This has been the case in virtually the entire tournament. Other than in the opening game when they ran into foul trouble, more good work down low. Ben Grant there to put it away. He's uh, putting his stamp on this fourth yeah. quarter, and with it, probably a Hansworth victory. Will go if they are able to hang on as their fourth writ title. A foul called here, looks like against Butler. Under five to go, now a 16 point deficit. Really ballooned here in the last couple of minutes of play. Penner gonna put up the long shot, he's off the mark. And he's been pretty ordinary tonight. You wonder if it's the ankle or or uh, just a Hansworth defense right. harassing him all night. But he's uh, he's made a couple, but certainly hasn't been a difference maker. And Rose takes it and gets it to drop. Vancouver pulling away against an understandably tired Winnipeg team. That one won't drop for Gachalian. Now long outlet pass. Intended for Grant, well read by Kamara. Yeah, those are the ones, that say, hey, you got an 18 point lead, you probably don't need that right now. Right. And sort of be, yeah, here we go. And playing sort of calming him down, getting him into their half court set. Get a good look, take some time. Gets it into the hands of Butler. Grant again looking to attack, that one won't go. Yeah, but again, I mean, that's, that's where you want to go. You get it to Grant at the free throw line where he's been dominant in the whole second half. He gets a great drive. Didn't go, but he got a good look. I mean, that's what you want to take every time with about 12 seconds on the shot clock, 10 seconds left to go. Remains an 18-point game. Reyes, 4-3, no good. Just nothing falling right now for Garden City right now that's really been the case for a good chunk of the game save for a brief portion of the third quarter where they were able to get back within one point McLean. Charles Barkley would be uh, saying I told you so right now with jump shooting teams don't win championships <laughs> and he's, he's not usually wrong no he's uh, about not, uh, well wait a minute. anything yeah, that's right Chuck knows all Chuck. Yeah, we're one basket away from having to dig into our garbage time material. <laughs> well, with the Charles Barkley thing, we may be already there. Nice spin oh. move. Gachalian gets there it go. to no drop. No garbage time yet. 16-point <laughs> lead. Three minutes left. Get a stop and a three. Maybe start to extend the pressure a little bit. I mean, they've been just sitting in this half court. I know they've got six guys, and maybe you've only got three minutes to go. You might have to dig deep here and extend that pressure. Horn again from well outside, hits for three. And those are really, I mean, those are undefendable. When you're yeah. running your offense and, and you get a kick out uh, to a guy that's eight feet beyond the three-point line, I mean, you're going to get that. You're going to get up with that shot. And then just a heartbreaker for Kamara. Looked like that was in. Rim just spit it out. So now McLean once again coolly brings it down the floor. Fourth grip title becoming more and more a reality. Butler can't get it to go, does draw contact. These are, that's a solid possession for Hansworth. I mean, in the era now where we play with a 24 second shot clock, as opposed to a 30 from, from the old days, you can't really run stall ball anymore. Right. Um, but you want to run your offense and, and take a good shot. You don't want to force anything, throw up anything quick, uh, but you just want to make sure that you're patient and you're taking the best shot you can on every possession. And that's exactly what Hansworth has been doing. Butler gets the first one to rattle home, second one long. But right there, man, Ben Grant, what a game he's had, what a second half he's had. Offensive rebound leads to another long take for Horn. That one well off the mark. Yeah, I mean, that one, you get an offensive rebound. We just talked about the good shots you need to take with this kind of a lead. Jack's about a 24, <laughs> 25 footer with uh, 20 seconds left on the shot clock. If you're Grant, who's just worked for that offensive rebound, you're going to be thinking, come on, man. <laughs> like, come on. Hansworth does get it back, following another miss. LaRose, 
Down to six on the shot clock. Turnaround shot, no good. Reyes comes in. Gachalian comes away with the loose ball, pardon me. Penner, Grant all over him. Back into the hands of Reyes. He'll put up the three-pointer. That one just gets rim. Minute and a half to go on this one, a 20-point lead. This is one of these ones when you look at the final score, this is, might go down as uh, something you regard as a blowout. But was a close game for much of the game. Crowd starting to make some noise as some players from the Royals are going to get a taste of grit action. Get some substitutions at the next whistle. If we get a whistle, a minute to go. The chant begins. To be honest, I don't know what people are chanting. I, I'm not sure. I, I think it must be uh, some, maybe one of the Hansworth bench players. Who knows? Oftentimes at this point in the game when the chant starts is to get somebody in the game that, the, that maybe doesn't play much. Jacob Shandro coming into the game for Hansworth. Scott Watson, Daniel Shokamoyed as well, seeing their first action. As well as, once again, a mystery number 20. <laughs> Come on, Hansworth. We'll give you the title, but... Maybe they just drop their uniforms in the middle of the floor and just say, just grab one, boys. This is Shandro. Shandro up top. Long shot. That one won't go, but being fouled is Shokamoyed. Well, this is the guy that the, that crew up in the stands wanted to score for sure. Yeah. Not sure what the deal is there, but uh, they're pretty pleased that he got a shot up and might get some points here. Great 11 guard, Daniel Shokamoyed. He'll be shooting three free throws. First one off the mark. Second one drops and the crowd goes crazy. This is where it'd be good to have a roving reporter so we can yes. go and ask anyone in the stands who knows things <laughs> that we don't. Shokamoyed one for three on the trip. Pads the Handsworth advantage, 21 points. Now just a matter of time before they will in fact claim their fourth Bedford Road Invitational Tournament title. Garden City also going into their bench. Kai Leong wearing number one. He gets to see the floor, but the Handsworth Royals players come off the bench ready to celebrate. Final seven seconds going to be dribbled out. Congratulations, Handsworth Royals out of Vancouver, British Columbia, 2018 Bedford Road Invitational Tournament champions. Outstanding effort for Hansworth, winning their fourth ever title. Congratulations to them, and man, oh man, it will go as a tough loss for Garden City, but you can't fault their effort this weekend at Brit, coming in under Matt, playing an outstanding series of games, and just coming up a little bit short in the championship. Yeah, and sometimes when you're a three-point shooting team and they don't go, uh, it looks ugly, you end up with 32 points on the board in the final game, and, and that's just, uh, that's not gonna get it done. 53-32 is the final score. Hansworth Royals out of Vancouver, British Columbia are the champions of the 50th installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. We are going to take one last break. You are watching live Bedford Road Invitational Basketball on Shaw TV. Punch TV, it's the nerdiest show on the airwaves, featuring artists, geeks, and special guests who love comics, toys, and pop culture. Watch Punch TV, only on Shaw TV. You know, Harrison and I really enjoy cooking in the kitchen. And we want you to join us.
Hi, I'm Wilna from iHeart Studio. Join me for an adventure into the creative side of life. With each project, we celebrate the beauty of life with art. I'll help you find your inner creative self on iHeart Studio. Where there are no bars, there's freedom. It's where we find the strongest connections. And power we never knew we had. It's not always easy. And sometimes you wonder what you got yourself into. But when the stars are your compass, you tend to find your way. Join the movement. You have the power to give life. Donate blood today. The regulars, the guys who keep this place in business. Last week, they had something to celebrate. Jason had just finished university. So they toasted his profs, his TAs, his old roommates. Well, they toasted just about everyone. But I worry about and take care of my guys. So even when I know they're not driving, sometimes that means bringing them a little surprise. And then they had a drink to me. Brought to you by SmartServe Ontario and Arrive Alive, Drive Sober. Ever watch TV and said to yourself, I could do that? Well, you can. As part of its community access programming, Shaw TV is looking for volunteer-run, community-produced short segments and shows. Create your own program, your ideas, your vision, on television. Bring us your proposal, sell us on it, and we'll train you and your crew, providing the professional equipment you need to make your ideas reality for free. Everyone is welcome. Get involved in making your own community program. See where it takes you. The final score in the championship game, 53-32, Hansworth Royals out of Vancouver, British Columbia. The champions of the 50th Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. We'll take a look back at some of the highlights from the second half of this championship game. Highlights were kind of hard to come by for Garden City in the second half of action, although nice touch there by Gachalian on that touch. But man, oh man, the story of the second half was really Ben Grant of the Hansworth Royals. Ended up with 19 points in the game, 14 of those coming in the second half. You score 14 points and a half in bridge, you've really done something, Scott. Yeah, and he was a monster on the boards as well. He was just uh, the total package for them in the second half. The play kind of in the first half. Grant in the second half, and it was just too much for Garden City to overcome with a, a lack of shooting on their part. So 19 points, as I mentioned, for Ben Grant. Blake McLean, also a nice game. He ended up with 12 on the evening, eight points in the loss for Kalen Reyes, seven apiece for Kevin Kamara and Troy Penner. As we look at some more from the Ben Grant show here in the second half of action. Congratulations, the All-Star team has just been announced. Kalen Reyes is on that All-Star team from Garden City, as is Ben Grant from Hansworth. The MVP of the tournament, Blake McLean from Hansworth. What an outstanding tournament. He had the other All-Stars want to make mention of Addison Dewar, or pardon me, Alexander Dewar from the Marion Graham Falcons. I made it through the whole weekend without calling him Addison, 
Alexander Dewar. Uh, congratulations to him as well as Jeff Koholis from the Notre Dame Eagles. And that is going to do it for Brit 50 from Bedford Road Collegiate. What a weekend it has been. Outstanding weekend of basketball and cheerleading and so many memories we got to relive of 50 years of outstanding basketball from here on Avenue H. So on behalf of Scott Hawley and the whole Shaw TV team, I'm Simon Hyatt. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next year for Brit 51.